Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You got your boys, Bert and Lanny, the DD, your favorite dividend investors out there on the YouTube channel, pursuing that financial freedom by building that passive income stream, by buying dividend stocks and ETFs, Bert. We're recording this now on a Tuesday night, January 10th. We're going to have a little fun today, talk a little mm -hmm. strategy, talk a little Q&A between the diplomats here about what to expect in 2023, what our investing approach is, and what we're looking forward to. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. More discussion-based, obviously. So excited. Um, we're very pumped up to do this. And obviously with this, since it's discussion-based, we want you to respond to every single one of these in the comment section below too. We're answering these questions from our perspective. We want to get your thoughts too on all of these. So make sure you are very active in the comment section. We're both going to jump in and reply when we see something. But Lanny, before we jump in, everybody needs to smash the heck out of that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's go, everybody. Our March to 20,000 subscribers by March 31st is on, and we need your help to spread the love for dividend investing and financial freedom. Guys, that's exactly right. So we're going to dive in again, Q&A style. It's 2023, new year, new you, right? Um, you know, we're going to talk about kind of looking into 2023. What do we expect from a stock market performance standpoint? What do we expect to happen this year? We'll talk about favorite stocks or best stocks to buy here in 2023. We'll look at possibly expected dividend growth rate. We'll look at a bunch of other questions. So this actually might be part one of a two-part 2023 series. Um, so this will be pretty fun, right, Bert? Yeah, that's right. And you know what? If you guys give us enough questions to more things you want us to discuss, we can keep adding them on. We, we're planning for two parts, but we can add in a third. We can add in a fourth if we have enough questions to do it. So let us know what else you'd want us to talk below. So yeah, that first question, man. I mean, what do we expect here in 2023 from dividend stocks and the stock market in general? What do you expect, Bert? All right. So the stock market obviously was down 20%. Let's just give a quick recap of some of the major things that happened in 2022. Interest rates have grown at the at the fastest clip in what decades, Lanny? I can't think of 40 plus years. Yeah. 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 There's never a time where I remember seeing interest rates like this. We've basically been investing in the low interest rate environment. And that really just shook everything up. Interest rates sky high inflation shook the market in 2022 and the S&P 500 was down 20%. So what do you expect in 2023? Ending 2022, you started to see the impact of higher interest rates and the inflation. You saw a lot of companies slash earnings estimates. You saw a lot of people taking the hits in there. And what I'm predicting is while the stock market's not going to decrease 20%, I'm not expecting a a massive takeoff in the stock market. I'm expecting just kind of a, a hang tight, slower year where results are just kind of meh as you like work through the inflation. You're not going to see something unless the Fed decides to change its course and suddenly drop interest rates drastically. I don't think there's going to be a major upward movement in the S&P 500. That's just my prediction. Yeah. I mean, obviously to have down back to back years, it doesn't happen often. Not to say it's impossible it's a it's a rarity mm -hmm. um i think it happens you know less than that uh, somebody can fact check me here in the comments mm -hmm. but you know less than 10 percent of the time when the market goes down there's an additional year where the market is down you know i think the stock market should be relatively flat mm -hmm. in 2023 there's nothing that really gives me like appreciation hope right because rates will still rise for the next oh, I don't know, two yeah. to six months, and then they'll probably hold it tight on a, you know, sort of they'll plateau it in the second half of the year. Um, you know, I, I think that could be the largest development into the year is that the Fed just sees the data in the first quarter and decides to slow down the rate, the, the pace at which it's growing interest rates, or to your point, plateau. And I think that might come earlier in 2023 than we're expecting, but that's that could easily not happen too. It's, it's going to be interesting. But, you know, regardless, though, I know, Bert, I know you're going to stay yeah. invested. I'm going to keep sure. investing because we, we can't time it. We can't predict what's going mm -hmm. to happen in the stock market, no matter how many emails and direct messages that we get on our social media channels about what to do in 2023. We do not know, but yeah. we are going to stay invested. We are going to keep invested. 
um, and stay yeah. invested, you know, during this time period. And with that too, I know one of the things you mentioned too, with what are we expecting from the dividend and growth standpoint from the overall market? Um, I think it's going to be a trend. The trend that I see happening is the trend we started to see in the third and the fourth quarter is overall slower dividend growth. You saw a lot of companies announcing lower than average dividend increases. So I, I see, I see that continuing in 2023 until we break out of this slump or potential recession that we're all talking through. And what are you thinking from a dividend growth standpoint? Yeah, you know, typically my portfolio is churned over the long term, like an average of around 7% average dividend growth rate. I think that's, you know, kind of where I ended up, you know, if I'm actually looking at my portfolio right now as we speak. Um, my 2022 weighted average dividend growth rate was 7.13%. So, you know, going into this year, somewhere in that five to 7% range, I still think it's doable, but not your, you know, six to eight or seven to 10% range. I do agree with you that dividend growth shouldn't be booming or firing all cylinders, but um, I still think it will, you know, it will still be there because obviously you invest in dividend aristocrats, dividend kinks who increase their dividend every year, no matter what. Um, but I think I agree with you that the growth rate will slightly slow. Yeah. So with that too, well, we're also talking about 2023. Are there any sectors, Lanny, that you're thinking through that are, uh, like what type of sectors, what type of stocks um, are you expecting to be showing some signs of value throughout yeah. 2023? If any, I know we can't predict it, but what are you thinking? That's a great question. You know, I know and we've chatted about this a lot and I'm, I'm pumped that it's like, Hey, let's just put this out on the channel. You know, I think, you know, one big one for me is, you know, when you think of recession proof stocks, um, you know, really almost inflation proof as well is the, uh, you know, anywhere in the food industry, you know, you think of Kroger, ticker symbols, KR, if you can find some value there, um, if they fit your criteria, they fit your metrics, but you want to chase a higher yield, but that stock at like Kroger is like, oh, well, the metrics make sense, buy them. Mm -hmm. um, because they're going to persevere through this. They're going to continue to do well. Um, you know, Arthur Daniels, the dividend aristocrat right there, ticker symbols ADM, if you could find some value there. If you see a, a dip in price that is not normal for them, that's a great stock to buy. Um, great. I mean, yeah. I know you have a big position there. Oh, yeah. a big position. It's one of my larger stocks. It's a great yeah. call out. And the one, one stock I've been buying a lot of in at the end of 2022 and early 2023. And people can are on both sides of the fence. There's not really somebody in the middle, but it's United Parcel Services, ticker symbol UPS. You know, bring them up because whether it's them or FedEx, you know, I still don't think people are wanting are wanting to get out of their comfort zone. I think the pandemic put everybody in this comfort convenience zone of getting everything delivered and you know, right to them, whether that same day. Yeah you know, next day. And I, I believe, you know, that's here to stay. So I think that they're just going to pass the cost on to all their customers, businesses and yeah. consumers. I mean, if you think about it, um, Walmart Target um, had to figure out a way to adapt quickly to Amazon, who was kind of built for the pandemic to happen where they're just shipping stuff anyway. These big box retailers that had to close had to find a way quickly to offer shipping. And to your point, it's really easy to ship from Target. I have Walmart Plus. It's very easy to have your groceries delivered, have things just shipped to you. It's nice. Like it's a convenience. That I don't think people are going to want to give up. I'm having yeah. stuff delivered right now. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I agree. I think UPS is a great one. You see the trucks just going up and down your street all day. I mean, from me, I think a sector that is going to show, give, just present different banks are going to show different opportunity there. Because if you think about what's happening in the banking sector right now, Banks are preparing for the recession. They're increasing their reserves. Um, earnings aren't as strong because they're facing some income pressure, some interest pressure. They're facing it on the, the top and the bottom with rising rates and the impact it's having on bottom line. So I think you could just find a lot of potential banks out there at different times. I look at like a company in my mind, if I ever see JP Morgan just fall, it's one of those ones I'm just, I've wanted to, why not look at JP Morgan? I've been talking about Huntington. I've been buying... I didn't know you were talking about key city. I've been buying city. Like there are a lot of great banks. And I think that sector, especially if it's a rough first quarter where they start showing signs of delinquency, they start showing recessionary signs. You might be able to capture some value while you have some turbulent times in the ones that have safe balance sheets. There it is guys. Banking. 
birth into banking in 2023, you know, obviously they catch it on both ends. In a rising rate environment, their cost of funds right now, there's a war on deposits and share accounts for those credit unions out there. Um, people are, you know, they're paying a high premium for your dollars. And, you know, obviously loan interest rates should go up, but right now the cost of funding those loans went way up in 2022. They're going to be way up in 2023 and they'll probably be way up in 2024. So there could be some great short-term deep value if the market doesn't understand that. Okay, Lanny. So now we've talked about what we're expecting, just some high level predictions for 2023. We've talked about what we're expecting from a dividend stock perspective in the year. We've also covered some sectors, some um, areas and potential companies that we may be seeing that we're liking. Just let me just ask you a pretty blunt question through this. What are some of your favorite stocks in 2023? Well, to beat the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! Um, 2023, you know, obviously we know what stocks I've been buying lately for my wife and my portfolio, you know, still pretty big on UPS as I just Mm -hmm. talked about, you know, I'm not going to be as stubborn. If I see them under 180, 175, you know, I'm going to consider keeping to add to that position. I'll believe that you're not going to be stubborn when I see it. I don't right. buy that for one second, Lanny. You know, MDT, you know, Medtronic, you know, that stock has fluctuated between 77 and 81 already in 2023. But, you know, we're still going to buy probably at least a share a week in my wife's account there, really build up a dividend aristocrat spot. And I'm really curious about Elevens Health, which was Anthem, um, ticker symbol for as e- ELV now. Uh, they just changed their name and their ticker symbol. So, which you know, I'm pretty curious about because I wanted to add more to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think health insurance is pretty interesting play as well, um, you know, yeah, right now no. and going forward. Yeah, I think those are great. I mean, Anthem's massive, whatever their name of their new company is, I apologize. I mean, I think those are great. Aristocrats are never a bad way to go, especially in turbulent times. And another with the other sector, healthcare, I mean, I get it. People are getting older, costs of healthcare continue to rise too. So, I mean, it makes sense why those are going to be on your radar, especially if it's going to be slumping and presenting opportunities for you to buy at a discount. What about you? What stocks are you looking at, Bert, for 2023? I also, I also like Medtronic. I'm not going to lie. Just a great comment. I'm happy we've been able to start building a position for my wife in there. Another one that continues to jump out at me is T. Rowe Price. I just put them on my watch list. I'm going to continue looking at T. Rowe Price. They've been moving with the market. So the market's been down. T. Rowe Price remains down. That yield over 4% for um, asset, one of the largest asset management company. I, I love it right now great balance sheet. So as long as the market's down, T. Rowe's down, like you, I shouldn't be so stubborn with T. Rowe Price. Just keep adding one share at a time, brick by brick, and keep building that position. I mean, another one, Texas Instruments. Everyone should know I've been amped up on the tech sector recently. Why? It was a really weird pivot in 2022, but I've just been trying to grab as many as I can. Texas Instruments is just in a sector that's beaten down. The semiconductors continue to get work through demand issues. So While they're running into some issues, they're not supply chain problems. I'm just going to keep picking and adding one or two of text instruments at a time. But I think long-term, them and so many other in that sector are going to be winners. They're just one of my favorites that at the end of 2023, I think I would be happy that I started building up my position in them during the year. Hey, can't. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong there. And they're about to be a dividend aristocrat in a few years too. Yeah, they're not too far off. So I think those are kind of the big stocks that, Working on, I think it's a great list of favorite stocks. What are your favorite stocks here in 2023? You know, you have to stay tuned to part two of the 2023 investing dividend investing in 2023, and what we think the outlook's going to be. Or what else you got for the viewers and the community? Again, everybody, let us know your thoughts in there. Let us know what other things you might want us to discuss in parts three, parts four, and if we have enough, we will produce them. But right now, we're just planning on parts one and two. Lastly, if you haven't already, get us to freaking 20,000 subscribers. Come on, everybody. Help me help you. Help me help you. So, guys, you're either with us or you're against us. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.